Powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. As Hurricane Irma moves through the Atlantic, President Trump declares emergencies in several U.S. territories. I'm Seth Lemon in Washington with more coming up. And closer to home, a man escapes with his life after being attacked by a grizzly bear while hunting south of Ennis. That story of Monday's attack, that's coming up. 6.30 on this Wednesday, Chet Lehman, Missy O'Malley with you. Matt has our forecast. Again, our top story, the most powerful Atlantic storm in recorded history started lashing parts of the Caribbean as it makes its way towards Florida. Irma has sustained winds as high as 185 miles an hour. CBS's Seth Lemon is in Washington with our latest. This is video from the eye of Irma, the most powerful Atlantic Ocean hurricane in recorded history. The storm has officially made landfall as it churns through the Caribbean, heading towards Florida. After everything that happened in Houston, I think everyone is really paying more attention probably than they have in the past. Topping the scale as a powerful Category 5 storm, winds have reached 185 miles per hour. Officials in the Bahamas issued its largest hurricane evacuation ever. In the Florida Keys, where most islands are three to five feet above sea level, storm surge could reach 10 feet. We could be looking at, uh, at wave heights that would literally put the ocean over the islands. The storm is predicted to march toward Puerto Rico and Cuba before possibly heading toward the U.S. mainland over the weekend. It's going to turn to the north. Is it going to be out here? Is it going to be right across Florida? Is it going to be in the Gulf Coast? Too early to tell. President Trump has already declared emergencies in Florida, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Normally, uh, you know, it's a wait and see deal, but I'll be honest with you. This track of this particular hurricane could be so devastating that we're getting an early jump on it. Despite the pressing need for resources after Harvey, Florida's governor insists FEMA is prepared and ready to help in case this powerful storm takes a toll. Seth Lemon for CBS News, Washington. Now, what could make a bad situation even worse? A tropical storm just formed behind Irma. The National Hurricane Center says that that system is called Jose. It could be become a hurricane by tonight. Pretty amazing stuff. Yeah. Now, uh, this is the strongest storm in the Atlantic Basin, uh, at least recently. So we'll be watching this. The current track, uh, we were seeing signs of this uh, basically moving in right at uh, the tip of Florida. So as a category four storm, what's interesting about this, um, really the most powerful part of that storm into the eastern side of Florida. For us, uh, air quality has been an issue, continues to be so moderate for air quality in Bozeman, unhealthy for sensitive groups in Butte. Temperatures actually very comfortable and cool for the early morning. Still a lot of smoke in our sky and that's not going to change temperatures into the mid to upper 80s as you head into the afternoon today, both east and west of the divide. We'll talk more about what you can expect, including our rain chances in the upcoming days. That's coming up in just a few minutes. Thanks, Matt. 633, tropical storms and hurricanes in the Atlantic. Back here at home, wildfires continue to rage across the Treasure State. Lincoln County Sheriff's Office confirms 10 homes and 30 outbuildings destroyed in the Caribou Fire burning near Eureka. That's still an unofficial number, by the way. Authorities are still trying to assess the complete damage. That blaze grew 2,000 acres Monday night alone, bringing the total fire size to a little more than 19,000 acres. Fire has been burning just since August 11th, but there was a major expansion of the fire late last week as it traveled further east toward a number of structures in the West Kootenai area. Tuesday's growth on the west side of the fire prompted the Lincoln County Sheriff's Office to put the Basin Creek area under pre-evacuation uh, pre orders. Mandatory evacuations are still in place for any residents north of Tule Lake in the West Kootenai area and pre-evacuation still in place for those south of Tule Lake. That fire, the number one priority in the nation. Incident Commander Bob Hoback says more resources are coming in, but firefighters are still in need. We expect to have a, another hotshot crew in here over the next few days. We're seeing some Type 6 and Type 4 engines coming in, and I believe we got to fill in one of the he helicopters. Um, but we still have outstanding resource needs, and we're hoping they come in every day. Important note, uh, 17,000 acres of that fire are in the United States, just under 2,000 acres actually burning in Canada. An enormous growth took place on the Rice Ridge fire over the weekend northeast of Sealy Lake. 
The Rice Ridge and Reef Fire grew together towards the north in the Bob Marshall Wilderness. It's now blown up to more than 118,000 acres, still roaring with only 2% containment. 11 people have been injured fighting that fire so far. Almost 1,100 structures are now threatened. Some positive news. Authorities have lifted the mandatory evacuation orders that were put in place over the weekend near the Lolo Peak Fire. Ravalli County Sheriff's Office tells MTN News those evacuation orders have been downgraded to an evacuation warning. That's for about 200 homes were placed under mandatory evacuation on Sunday in the Florence area. Evacuation warnings still remain in effect for some residents living west of Highway 93. And the Sprague Fire, which burned the Sperry Chalet and forced evacuations on the west side of Glacier National Park, has now grown to more than 13,000 acres. An evacuation order that was put in place on Sunday remains in effect. The order runs from the south end of Lake McDonald to the north of Logan Pass. It includes the Sprague Creek Campground, the Avalanche Campground, and about 55 private homes. Closer to home public meeting for the Myers Fire and Sapphire Complex held at the Granite County High School in Phillipsburg last evening. Fire is approaching 55,000 charred acres. Firefighters say some crews will move to the Bitterroot side of the blaze to help build new fire line there. People living near both the east and west boundaries of the fire have been told to be ready to evacuate on a moment's notice. Air purifiers are being delivered to some schools in smoke-filled areas around Florence. The help from Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Montana will help, especially with children with asthma. Some of the 10 units will go in a couple of classrooms and the library. Several other purifiers will be available where needed. Air quality in the Florence area has regularly been coming in as unhealthy for sensitive groups. Unhealthy and very unhealthy. Now, no we may question, not be dealing with... No question, the cost of fighting these fires is very expensive, not to mention the number of Montanans who have been displaced from their homes and are relying on shelters. MTN's Morgan Davies wanted to see how people in our community are stepping up to try to help. We may not be dealing with wildfires directly here in Bozeman, but it hasn't stopped local businesses from wanting to step up and help our other communities with firefighting relief. So we really wanted to see what we could do to help our state. Treeline Coffee Roasters has launched a Fight Fire with Food benefit. For the month of September, 10% of any food item purchased at Treeline will be donated to firefighting relief funds through Stockman Bank. We're really hopeful that we'll be able to get a good chunk of change over to Stockman to have them put toward the fires. Um, and the fact that they're matching it is absolutely amazing. There are currently 44 active fires burning around the state, estimating at over 800,000 acres. Treeline believes that even though they may not be right here in the Gallatin Valley, that as Montanans, we are all in this together. We have people, firefighters, that are volunteering there that we all know. So just because it's not directing us directly, even though you know we're feeling the smoke and we're seeing the smoke, um, our neighbors, our family, our friends, they're all affected by it. Of course, this is just one way that we can give back to firefighting relief, but there are other options through the Red Cross as well as United Way. Reporting in Bozeman, Morgan Davies, MTN News. Now, of course, we know this is just one way people have stepped up to help with fire relief, so email us or post on our Facebook uh, on any way that you know of someone in our community stepping up as we continue through this undying fire season. And the Red Cross has opened six evacuation shelters over the course of Labor Day weekend for those affected by Montana wildfires. The agency wants people to know how they can designate their donations for Montana wild, wildfire relief. Red Cross officials say that the most effective way to keep dollars local is by sending a check to the Great Falls headquarters. Residents can also keep their money in Montana while donating online. And for the thousands of businesses filing incorporation papers in Montana, it's now becoming easier and more accurate. Montana Secretary of State Corey Stapleton says that as, as of last Friday, the filings of these papers is entirely digital, online, or with a mobile device. Each year, about 160,000 companies must file or renew their corporation incorporation papers in Montana. Stapleton says that his office has been accepting digital and paper filings and that the old system led to many errors, which cost the state and businesses time and money. He says with the new system, it's impossible to accept an error, so businesses do it only once. When we do that efficiently, it makes it easier for, for businesses to create capital, to hire people, 
but it also authenticates uh, our businesses here in the state with others, not just in the country, but even around the world. We're facilitating better business in Montana by simply uh, having the best website available and uh, making it something that people are confident in. Now, Stapleton is a Republican who took over the office as of this year. A hunter attacked by a grizzly bear while elk hunting south of Ennis early Monday morning. Fish, Wildlife and Parks spokesperson Greg Lemon says the two hunters were on the west side of the Madison Range in a very remote hunting area when they encountered a grizzly bear feeding on a carcass. Bear charged the pair, but a bear spray canister failed to work for one of the men. Grizzly attacked that man. His friend was able to again use bear spray to get the grizzly off the man, and the two were able to get out of the forest. According to Facebook posts that now has more than 300 or 3,000 shares and where pictures can be seen, man injured was Tom Summer. He's from St. Louis, Missouri. FWP says that his non-life-threatening injuries was treated at the Madison Valley Medical Center in Ennis. That same post says Summers was released yesterday. We're going to take a quick break here on Montana this morning. Uh, when we uh, come back, uh, here's a preview of uh, what's coming up on Montana. The ratings are in for the safest small pickup trucks. I'm Meg Oliver with the latest report card coming up. Good morning to you ahead on CBS this morning. We're in Puerto Rico and South Florida before the most powerful Atlantic Ocean hurricane in recorded history slams ashore. And we'll talk with FEMA Administrator Brock Long about getting resources for Irma in the wake of Harvey. We'll see you 7 o'clock on the dot.